Welcome to Mintel's Little Conversation, real conversations with actionable insights into what consumers want and why. I'm Lynn Dornblazer, and today we're re-airing an episode from last season that looks into why and how astrology is used in marketing. Looking to the stars, host Alicia Young was joined by several consumer experts at Mintel, by Chi Young, Diana Kelter, and Nicole Bond. And they discussed why horoscopes and astrological signs are gaining increased popularity in social media, especially among Gen Z consumers, and how products inspired with astrology are influencing consumers today. Enjoy our conversation, and we'll see you back here with a new episode very soon. I'm Alicia Young, Trends Manager for the APAC region here at Minto, and I'm based in Sydney. You probably know your star sign, right? You might even know that Tauruses can be a little bit stubborn or that Virgos are a little bit pedantic or maybe even that Leos like to be the life of the party. Astrology has been around forever. We probably all remember reading our daily horoscopes in the paper and you know, have a bit of a laugh. But in recent years, we've seen a real resurgence of interest in astrology, which started with millennials and seems to have just exploded with Gen Z. And these aren't your grandma's horoscopes anymore. This is proper astrological charting based on the month and the date and the time you were born, the position of all the planets at the exact moment that you popped out into the world. So what's going on? Why astrology and why now? It's, it's not the latest fad or tech innovation. In fact, it's not new at all. Astrology has been with us since at least the 2nd century BCE, when cultures including the Hindus, Chinese, um, even the Mayans developed elaborate systems to predict what might happen in their lives based on what was happening in the skies. So, why is it all over social media and why are young people obsessed with it? Joining me to explore these important questions is Hoi Chi Young in Singapore and Diana Kelta and Nicole Bond in Chicago. So, first off, Let's go around and do some introductions, and please also let me know so we can kind of feel like we understand you a little bit better, what your star sign is. I'm a Virgo. I'll start. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. Thanks for having me. I'm Hui Chi from the Singapore office, and I'm a consumer lifestyle analyst here. And I'm also a Virgo, but I'm the most un-Virgo Virgo you'll ever meet. So I think I was born in the wrong months. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for astrology, does it, Hoji? I know, <laughs> right off the start. Hi, I'm Diana Kelter. Uh, my astrolog- astrological sign is Taurus. Uh, and as you mentioned, Alicia, we're a stubborn group. We also like our comfort. And I am a tried and true Taurus. I definitely live by what everything uh, about Taurus is said. Uh, my Chinese zodiac sign is the rabbit. I know we're going to talk a little about that as well. Um, and my role at Mintel is I am an associate director of trends for North America. So my job is really looking at shifts in consumer behavior from a macro lens. Uh, so tracking the evolution of astrology and how that's impacting consumers is definitely in that wheelhouse. So I'm excited for this. Hi, I think I'm going to be the only uh, Gemini here. Um, I am Nicole Bond. I'm an associate director of marketing strategy for Comfort Media at Mintel. So that means I really focus on how competitors are activating different, you know, marketing techniques, themes, and, you know, just overall strategies um, across, you know, any and every all channels. So astrology is definitely taking part in that as well. And my tiny zodiac is the pig. I found that out this morning. <laughs> a pig. Excellent. I forgot to mention, mine is the dragon. Um, Hoi Chi is going to explain what that means later. But <laughs> yes. But yeah, you're born in a very auspicious year, Elisha. Brilliant. Born That's in, uh, so good for me. I know. I was born in the year of the rooster. So now we can start. Is that good or bad? It's neutral, I guess. Like some no. years they say it's great. Some years they say it's bad. So now I just read it at the start of the year and then move on. With Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so first off, I guess for anyone listening at home today who maybe doesn't spend so much time on Instagram or TikTok or who doesn't have any Gen Zs in their lives, Talk me through this astrology trend that we're seeing. Maybe Diana, I know you you you've been keeping track of it pretty closely. What have you seen? 
Yeah, I, well, I think the introduction you gave, Alicia, is spot on because it's true. Astrology is not something new. Uh, it's been our grandparents followed astrology. Horoscopes have been in papers for centuries. So it's not a new concept. But I think what really shifted with millennials and now Gen Z um, is that it's kind of a way to understand themselves because I think um, social media plays a big role in this because I think we've seen starting with millennials, they're just so overwhelmed with everything. And there's this comparison factor, especially with social media, where you're seeing what this person's doing and how that impacts their life. And so I just think that astrology was kind of shifted from being, am I going to be a millionaire 10 years from now? I think that's what we originally thought of it as, is what what does the future hold for me? And I think it really shifted to be an internal guide to this is a symbol of the Taurus and that's me. And it just gives people this kind of light bulb moment of feeling a sense of connection. Um, it's individual because it kind of helps you understand yourself, but it also makes you feel part of a collective as well because you can share those bonds with uh, everyone else who's part of your sign or understand maybe there's all things about like, are you compatible with your friends based on your signs? Are you compatible with your 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 spouse or your um significant other. So I think it's really helped guide a lot of things. And we actually have a trend at Mintel called guiding choice. And I think for the past few years now, that's how we've really seen brands leverage astrology is to help cut through decisions. So a lot of times if you're on Instagram, I've seen it from Starbucks. I saw it on apartment therapy, which is an interior design site recently where it's like, your sign means you should have this coffee drink or your sign means this is your decorating style or Spotify did astrology playlist. Like this is the kind of music that suits your astrological sign. So I think we've really seen brands use it to cut through this decision paralysis. As I mentioned earlier, that's really plaguing this generation because they have so much content uh, constantly around them that astrology is just like it simplifies things and helps you kind of make those decisions quicker. I'll build on that too. I think beyond kind of guiding decisions, I think it's really kind of helping people express themselves to a wide audience. So like they're using these commonly understood like characteristics or like you mentioned, like just meme culture in general to either start a conversation with their friends about like, you know, how they are, how they act, or just like sharing it to their stories to like, let the world know like, Hey, I'm a Gemini. And like, this is something that like I can relate to. So like, Let's all kind of like laugh about it or like relate to it together. So I think it's a really unique way to kind of express yourself um, and kind of the way that you make your decisions. So it's really, it's really interesting. So why do you think it's so popular now then? You know, millennials picked it up uh, um, a few years ago, but now we've seen it just explode across social media. Um, As Diana, you mentioned, we've seen brands start to touch on this as well. What do you think it is about this moment that's caused such a resurgence in interest in astrology? Yeah, I'll start. And then I'm curious to hear everyone else's thoughts. Um, So I would say that a big coordination with the rise is uncertainty. When everything feels uncertain, people are going to turn more to things that they feel are constant or um, kind of gives them a sense of control or certainty. Um, We had one of our 2022 trends this year was called In Control, and it's about consumers wanting to be feeling the driver's seat of the choices they make, the um, purchases they have. So I think astrology helps kind of provide what we might call as a road map for people um, when everything else feels uncertain you can turn to that to understand um, yourself and like Nicole was saying express yourself and feel connected to others so and I think we have seen a ton of uncertainty the past two years so I'm sure that plays a role in that kind of the foundation was set even before COVID and all the uncertainty we're facing but then that just put it into overdrive but curious to hear other people's thoughts on that. So yeah, like Diana said, like it's a lot of the uncertainty driving it. And I think, you know, being in a pandemic and having basically lots of stuff happening the past few years made people think a lot more about their well-being, including like spirituality. So finding something that they could believe in. And um like astrology was just in a very good place at a good time because um, like you said Elisha just now um, millennials picked up very long ago so there's always there's been like uh, mobile apps like CoStar and people were already using that before the pandemic and before like lots of stuff started happening so um, when the pandemic happened people were so online and they were just doom scrolling and 
eventually people realized that they needed a distraction or something else. But since they were stuck online, they started looking at more online resources. And I think those mobile apps like CoStar and all those that uh, tell you about your day, what to expect based on your astrological sign was just in a good place to take that position and offer a distraction for people. And also, yeah, tell them what to do, um, tell them what to look out for, especially, and which is, this is like especially important when you are in crisis and you need someone to tell you what to do. Yeah, the only thing that I'll add to that is I think it, you know, as, you know, the struggles of the past couple of years at this point, um, people like to find ways to kind of make light of certain situations or struggles that they're facing or even sometimes negative, like, personality traits. Um, so being able to kind of relate to something and have an explanation for for that behavior or for that situation or for that outcome, I think, like everyone has said already, it's just giving kind of people a way to understand and explain things that are happening and kind of give some... I guess, like rationale to, you know, what's going on in their lives, you know, good or bad. That's such a good point, Nicole, because I think that ties with anytime something crazy has happened, everyone's like, oh, Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> and I think it just gives that point of like explanation, like you were saying, it helps people feel a little more grounded because I think that's what people struggle with is not knowing a why. So I think that's such a good point that it helps provide that why for people in some cases. Yeah, in my in my research ahead of um, obviously yeah, recording this episode, I found a study back in 1982 that that mentioned that um, people who construct who consult sorry astrologers do so in response to stresses in their lives, stating that under conditions of high stress, the individual is prepared to use astrology as a coping device, even though under low stress conditions they may not actually believe in it, which I think is really interesting. So it's not even necessarily a matter of do they believe that, you know, this information is going to help them? Do they believe that it's actually going to occur? Um, and Nicole, you mentioned that, um, you know, it's, it's all about relatability and that kind of thing. We've seen astrology become the subject of endless memes and jokes and shareability, you know, things online. And yet people still also seem to follow it. They seem to engage with it fairly passionately as well. Do you think millennials and Gen Z genuinely believe in astrology or do you think they're doing it ironically or is it somewhere in the middle <laughs> as a proud younger millennial i would say that i personally fall somewhere in the middle um i don't necessarily like believe in it and will follow it day in and day out but i do love to see like the memes that have you know it's a single meme but like if you look at like an aries or a leo or a gemini like the wording on like what's happening in that meme is different um so i do just find it maybe it's ironic that i'm like oh like i can relate to this um but definitely i think for most in my opinion it would fall somewhere in the middle depending on whether or not like what's happening is lining up what's being with like what's being predicted versus like is it kind of just kind of making light the funny the you, you know the humorous play um on what your astrological signs can mean yeah and i i think we definitely see um some gender stigmas as well when it comes to astrology i think we primarily see women are more engaged with it and men are kind of the ones that scoff at it um and just kind of make light of it um but then i think they're always kind of surprised when it does reflect who they are <laughs> so i think they are not uh they do admit at times it does feel a sense of accuracy but i do think uh women are more likely to engage in it conversationally and truly believe in it and check um, kind of their horoscopes and under read the books about it and understand themselves better so i think that's definitely something for brands to be aware of as they engage like there is more of a a, a women-led interest in it so that kind of i guess then brings me to my next point right let's say hypothetically speaking that there is absolutely no scientific basis for believing in astrology it does not affect our lives in any way um sorry nicole perhaps yeah no, as a younger millennial maybe do believe in it but let's hypothetically say that beyond or do you think that there is any benefit to people engaging with it day to day um you know apart from the literal benefit of of, of knowing your future um and knowing what's coming around the corner do you think that there is anything that the people get out of it tangibly well, I'll add, I think it kind of falls into sometimes how we see the placebo effect have a positive benefit. And I think in that, in some ways it is that even if it 
isn't accurate, if it gives someone confidence and it gives them a sense of comfort, I think they're, that's a good thing. And I think it kind of will help people cope with things that are very stressful. Um, so I do think in that sense, it's one of those cases where maybe there is a stronger benefit than to the placebo effect than having true tried and true results that it works. Yeah. So like a health and well-being kind of mental effect. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and just to add on to that, like, you know, I was thinking, is it bad actually if we really believe in it or we have people around us who believe in it despite um, their uh, supposedly having no scientific basis? But, you know, astrology is pretty harmless like at the, in the grand scheme of things. It's people use them mainly for themselves to like uh, some, uh, find things that are relatable for themselves and they don't, I think most people don't use it um, really nearly they don't identify completely by one uh, astrological sign because that's the beauty of having stuff like your ascendant your uranus your neptune whatever all these things are so you can people can use like different aspects of that um to relate to themselves and like find things to identify with so eventually yeah it's a harmless thing i think it helps people more than it harms yeah, I think that's a great point because I think another thing that it does is it offers some sort of sense of community. So like you feel like there are people out there that are similar to you that, you know, have either similar experiences or share similar characteristics. And like with that kind of kind of brings a sense of belonging and allows you as like an individual to kind of look at, you know, your personal attributes, your characteristics and your lifestyle as not being so singular um, and kind of puts you into like a bigger group. So I think there is a sense of, of community that can really kind of play out and benefit people along the way. So you mentioned knowing yourself better um, and having this kind of, I guess, shorthand for being able to explain your personality traits or even just that self-awareness maybe aspect as well so being able to kind of deep dive and say oh maybe I am a little bit like this this has given me the language to explain how I react or how I behave do you think that that's you know we've seen Gen Z especially over the last couple of years they've really been a little socially isolated let's say um and really kind of restricted to online um communications and 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 relationship building and all of that kind of thing do you think that Maybe this is also a bit of a shorthand for being able to to relate to other people. And again, like you mentioned, Nicole, build that sense of community. Yeah, I think. I mean, I definitely think so. And I think it's a way, especially for, you know, younger people to essentially express themselves. So it gives them a sense of identity, a sense of purpose. It allows them to kind of go beyond just like, you know, the static image or videos that they're sharing on social media to kind of put context behind it in like a quick, easy to grasp, grasp scenario. So like if I put it to my story, people can easily know that like, I am this, I relate to like this, you know, particular meme or like situation. And it just really allows people who are used to communicating on social media to really kind of put themselves out in a bigger way. Perfect. So we've kind of, we've discussed, you know, the why of it all, you know, why people are are engaging with this and kind of what we've seen out in the world. So the bigger question for us, especially here at Mintel is how do brands leverage this interest? Have we seen, you know, any good examples of brands tapping into this? And I guess also importantly, why would a brand benefit from tapping into astrology? What does it, what does it provide? I know Diana, you mentioned previously kind of that, that guiding choice aspect, that kind of personalization as well. Um, Have we seen brands do this well or not do this well as well. I also love that. (laughs) Well, I'll kick off um, with some examples. As I mentioned, I I see it a lot on Instagram where it's, like I said, that decision paralysis helping you decide what you should buy or eat or drink. Um, But I think we also use it as a sense in some brands, we they're using it as a sense of informing people about their choices. I've seen at Target or other retailers as well, there's like candles that are based on your zodiac sign. And so you kind of learn what scents might appeal to you. Um, so kind of less about decision paralysis and more about what's kind of the expression of yourself connecting to something. And I think beyond astrology, I think we're seeing brands connect the dots is kind of a word I would use for different parts of consumers' life. I think Spotify does a really good job at kind of making partnerships or kind of doing that, using the data they have from what music you listen to, to inform that person about more about themselves. So one interesting example um, that we wrote about on the trend site was Bear Paint, actually an unexpected brand partnering with Spotify to put color 
um, to the choices, uh, the music choices you have. And it was an interactive tool. Um, and it just kind of, once again, informs someone about two different parts of their life, what paint you should use on our wall based on what your music choices say about you. And I think that's the same theme we see with astrology is how can I make this choice and what does that say about my astrological sign and does that inform this decision am i learning something new about myself and maybe i do like that color and i went to found it on my own without this tool and some people might look at it and say that's not accurate at all but they still had fun doing it so i think it's about the experience of doing the search or the quiz like buzzfeed quizzes were so popular and most of the time people would say that's ridiculous that's not me at all they don't care about the results it's just the fun of doing it sharing it so I think that's a big takeaway for brands is sometimes it's not about the result. It's about the experience the individual has doing it and the fact that they want to get a result to share with their friends. Yeah, I think it's really interesting how, you know, some brands, I think especially in kind of retail beauty, um, as you mentioned, Diana, like women heavily are, you know, way more into astrology than men, um, but they're kind of finding ways to tailor their products and services. So they're almost like cutting down, you know, kind of the noise for consumers based on, you know, this pre disclosed category that really makes the experience, like you said, feel very personal. So everyone is always searching for like, you know, personalization to have products that represent me, you know, so on and so forth. So if you can find a way, essentially, whether it's, you know, through astrology or something else to connect like one on one with a group of consumers, it makes what you're recommending as a product come off so much more authentic um, and kind of dry, it gives you a reason to purchase. It's like, oh, like I'm interested in this blazer because it aligns with like my sign. Um, and it just kind of sparks your interest and gives you a reason to explore a little bit more. So I definitely think curating based on signs and characteristics is a really interesting way that brands can play into this. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about how, you know, brands have effectively used Western astrology. So I'm here to make the case that, you know, Chinese zodiac, the Chinese zodiac can actually be used a lot more than just outside, just during Lunar New Year. I was going to say, it's a huge, a huge, um, you know, come, come Lunar New Year, it's everywhere, right? The Chinese zodiac, everything's a... Last year was the ox. What's this year? Yeah. Uh, this year is the tiger. Yes. Yeah, the tiger. <laughs> so, yeah, like, yeah, Elisha, yeah, right. So, we only see the Chinese zodiac the most, and pe- probably we only see the Chinese zodiac on, like, true, on brands and, like, marketing material during the Lunar New Year period, which is, like, at most, like, a two month period. And especially with the rise of the China market, we see a lot of, like, um, brands moving, uh, having um, special Lunar New Year launches. So we have stuff like um, Apple releasing Tiger branded AirPods. Um, what else? We have, I think, Gucci released like a tiger themed um, collection. But actually, <clears throat> all these last only for one or two months and then they drop off and they keep quiet until the next Lunar New Year, which is one whole year away. And in Singapore, where I'm living, the Chinese zodiac also only pops up during Lunar New Year. So the way it shows up is actually pretty interesting. So we have a lot of shopping malls in Singapore. So um, I don't know where these shopping malls get the predictions from. I think we all think it's just um, one guy who just sends out everything and gets paid once a year for that, for his prediction about um so or uh, at these shopping small shopping malls they have like billboards or uh, uh, standees telling you uh, based on which year you were born what's your love life gonna be what's your career gonna be like your family fortune gonna be like and all that so you will see uh, lots of people just milling around reading their reading their zodiac sign and what's going what supposedly lies ahead for the year so and that's actually a lot of interest about around this because um, it's always crowded at whichever shopping mall that you see. There will always be people reading it during Chinese New Year. But uh, yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, There's people interested in it, but it drops off and no one remembers it after the Lunar New Year period. So, you know, um, there's a lot of like mythology and also characteristics, character traits that surround the year that you're born in. So like, uh, Elisha, you said you were born in the year of the dragon, right? So, for example, the dragon is super popular because it's the only mythological creature out of all the 12 animals in the zodiac. So, it's supposedly representing luck and health and basically all the good stuff. So, we see lots of people, lots of babies born in the dragon years. So, that actually 
means more competition for schools in Singapore because that's a big topic. Like, you know, we have very few schools. So when the dragon year rolls about, there's always like, when the seven-year-old kids born in the year of the dragon start school and start enrolling, um, it gets very competitive and it always enters the news. But, you know, like there's so much more information and um, marketing material to be mined out of the Chinese zodiac. So I think it's about creating that like memory recall because even me as a Chinese person I only remember what the year of the dragon means and I'm not even born in the year of the dragon we just know that it's green so I did not realize it was such an important year that's that's I great know. yeah your parents how lucky to me <laughs> they did not plan it <laughs> your parents subconsciously I, planned it which is even better <laughs> So yeah, I, I just, you know, like, um, there's so much more to be mined out of the Chinese zodiac and, um, yeah, like brands should look towards that if they're looking for new material. Yeah. I mean, I think that is a huge opportunity, um, in terms of kind of extending the life of, you know, like your brand mascots or, you know, prominent characters in TV shows. So something that Amazon did early in like 2021 was they had this kind of, there was a group of three girls and there was a show on YouTube called what's your sign. And what it did was it brought up characters from its show that was like super popular at the time called the wilds. And it basically like, showed the characters, gave a more in-depth view of who they are, gave them all Zodiac signs. So it gives viewers a chance to essentially like get to know those characters more. So like you can form deeper relationships, you can form deeper connections, you have more of a reason to watch or engage. And like that just giving some like consumers a little bit more to hold on to will essentially like extend the life and like deepen that relationship no matter what we're talking about. So like if we could learn more about Jake from State Farm or maybe even the Geico or Flo from Progressive, like it would be so much, it would be so interesting. It would turn into memes. It would give consumers a reason to relate. Um, so I definitely think like whether it's, you know, the Chinese zodiacs or, you know, just astrological signs, it gives these kind of imaginative characters like personality. Um, so they kind of become a little bit more real. So I definitely think it's an opportunity to kind of do that across the board. If we give Jake from State Farm, you know, we tell everyone, actually, guys, did you know that he's a Leo as well? This whole backstory, like we're picturing him doing his thing out and about. We know how he'd react in situations. Such depth all of a sudden. Absolutely. You, you really can attach just like emotions and feelings and situations. You're like, it makes so much sense now. And suddenly, you know, if you're compatible with him as well, there's a lot. That, this is great. We can take this really quite far. So... We've seen astrology resonating with consumers for a number of reasons. Um, we've you know, heard about this, this sense of identity um, and community as well, this community building, the way that it can help um, millennials and Gen Z kind of really resonate and relate with people outside of obviously people within their communities, but also Jake with State Farm if need be, or, you know, characters in the wilds, um, you know, fictional characters as well. And it seems to also be giving them a bit, a bit of a, a shorthand to express themselves within their communities as well. So kind of being able to give them that content to express their identities and all of that kind of thing. And of course, we've heard about how astrology can allow brands to provide that sense of personalization and that sense of curation as well. I know we could probably continue to chat about our various star signs all day long, but I think we should probably wrap this one up. So thank you so much to our guests, Hoichi, Nicole, and Diana for joining me today. Um, learned a lot. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you'd like to know more about Mintel, who we are and what we do, head over to Mintel.com and follow us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the big ones. And check out our blog as well for even more insights from our analysts. And of course, if you like what you hear, then please tell your friends. And we'll catch you next time for another episode of Little Conversation. Little Conversation.